Today, Coinbase cuts 20% of its staff in a second major round of layoffs. FTX's chief engineer reportedly looks to cut a deal with prosecutors. And what's going on with Genesis, Grayscale, and their parent company, Digital Currency Group? David Seamer of Wave Financial weighs in. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Tanea McKeel. It's a day of green for crypto markets. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin rose to $17,300. Ether continued trading above $1,300 and Cardano ticked higher to 32 cents. Let's talk about the top stories. First, Coinbase is cutting a fifth of its workforce to right-size its business for the bear market. The crypto exchange plans to slash about 950 jobs, and it's the second round of sweeping layoffs the company's announced in the past year. Back in June, Coinbase cut 18% of its staff, saying the company grew too quickly during the bull market and that it needed to manage costs. In a phone interview with CNBC, Coinbase's CEO Brian Armstrong partly blamed the implosion of FTX for the latest round of layoffs. The cuts will bring Coinbase's operating expenses down by 25%, and the company said it expects losses to be within the $500 million guardrail it set last year. Coinbase's shares jumped 4.3% by noon Eastern after the announcement. Next, FTX's former chief engineer Nishad Singh is hoping to strike a cooperation deal with federal prosecutors. That's according to a report from Bloomberg, which cited people familiar with the matter. Singh hasn't been accused of anything, but he reportedly met with the Southern District of New York last week, and Bloomberg notes that in such meetings, people are usually granted limited immunity to share any information they have. Singh was instrumental in writing the software that built FTX's crypto exchange, and bankruptcy court documents show he received more than $500 million in loans from Alameda Research. Finally, Cameron Winklevoss is speaking out once again over the challenges between Genesis and Gemini. In an open letter to the board of parent company Digital Currency Group, Winklevoss claims customers of its earned service were, quote, defrauded by Genesis, DCG, and its CEO, Barry Silbert. Winklevoss goes even further, saying that Silbert is unfit to run the company and that there is no path forward with him at the helm. DCG responded to the letter on Twitter, saying, quote, this is another desperate and unconstructive publicity stunt from Cameron Winklevoss to deflect blame from himself and Gemini, who are solely responsible for operating Gemini Earn and marketing the program to its customers. About a week ago, Winklevoss wrote another open letter in which he accused Silbert of bad faith stalling tactics over frozen funds owed to the crypto company and its customers. OK, for our main story, we're sticking with Digital Currency Group. Crypto World's Jordan Smith spoke with David Seamer, who's the CEO of Wave Financial and says the company's done business with Genesis. The two of them spoke about what's going on at DCG and the implications of a potential bankruptcy. Okay, so I have to begin with the news on Friday, Bloomberg reporting that the DCG is being investigated by U.S. officials over internal transfers. And I'll make it clear that no one is accused of criminal conduct right now, but the pressure on the company is growing. So what's your reaction to that probe? I would have been shocked if there wasn't a probe. The with everything that's happening in crypto, all the new scrutiny that's coming out, um, especially what you know, this is stemming. It sounds like more from what happened back in May, June, uh, when three AC and a lot of other people, you know, kind of imploded. Um, so it's totally logical. I mean, as a as a crypto fan, I've been waiting for the SEC to actually get more involved in some of these problems because it actually is kind of necessary. Not that I know that what they'll do will be actually be helpful, but it's important that you know, all these investigations happen and there clearly has been a lot of wrongdoing. Focusing on DCG and some of its uh, businesses for right now, let's talk about Genesis first. The company laid off 30% of its staff recently. It's It's shutting down its wealth management business. Just how dire does the situation look there for that company? Ah, uh, really dire, and I would I would put that more in the the DCG dire, not just Genesis and the, whatever HQ was. So, so I mean, we we were actually like in 2021 and by the first part of 2022, we were one of the largest you know, counterparties that they told us with Genesis. Did a lot of trading with them, and I actually don't know why they didn't lay off more employees from the Genesis side, like. They called us right after the FTX news and they basically started talking about how Genesis might be bankrupt. And they asked, we want to keep working with them, like, you know, do we need trades for them? And we're just like, what are you talking about? You're announcing you're going into bankruptcy. Like, how would that even work? Like, you want me to, you know, I said, sure, you know, we do have some clients who always do a lot of trading, you know, by BTC or whatever. Um, and, and ask them, well, well, okay, well, how is this going to work? Usually we send you the money and you send us the Bitcoin. We're, we're not sending you the money. And they're like, oh yeah, we can't send you the Bitcoin first. 
And I was like, this makes no sense. Like you're in open default. Like you've announced <laughs> you're defaulting on, you know, a massive amount of money, a couple billion dollars. You know, why on earth would anybody send you money? So we, we did ask them like, yeah, how are things going? And you know, the answer basically was, yeah, it's really slow. I, obviously Barry is in massive triage mode now with DCG. Like he's, you know, the only thing I can say, and we're just looking at this pretty much as an outsider, uh, is it, everything's a delaying tactic. Like he, his hope seems to be that the market comes back uh, and the you know venture portfolio he has and some of the assets he has increase in value to the point that he can solve this you know massive hole on the Genesis side without having to implode the whole thing, you know, without having to fire sell Grayscale and CoinDesk and a whole bunch of other platforms. And I, I don't think it's going to work. You know, you probably have, you know, Gem Gemini alone has like 340,000, you know, users, which is a lot of people's life savings, but that's, that's one, you know, there's probably seven, 800,000 people that are, you know, hugely impacted by these actions, any, any few of which can put you into bankruptcy. You mentioned Grayscale, so I want to, I want to ask about that. Uh, can you give an update on the situation with GBTC and the discount it's trading at right now and what that means for holders uh, of that. What it should mean, and I think it probably does mean, is that the GBT, GBTC holders are fine. It's a trust, you know, the LPs of that trust own the trust. That's usually how it works. Now, obviously, usually how FTX should have worked is they shouldn't have loaned their assets to their sister company. You know? Anyway, so in, in a normal world, those assets be totally fine. All, all these DCG parent problems, which could possibly lead to like a bankruptcy and the unwinding of those trusts would be a huge boon to the trust holders. Now, the reason that the trust is trading such a discount is because you know, that's how it should work. And who, you know, but no one knows, <laughs> you know, are those assets really there? Coin, that, Coinbase kind of said, yeah, a lot of the assets are there in custody and then Grayscale never confirmed it. And, you know, so, you know, I, I nothing would surprise me at this point. You know, I mean, I, you know, um, after FTX and what we're seeing out of Genesis and just the utter, you know, misrepresentations and ineptitude, you know, I mean, it's not that easy to lose billions of dollars either. So you, you no one would put anything past anyone at this point. Yeah. So let's let's end on that that hypothetical there, it's simply because I think there were reports that Genesis could be eminently preparing to file for bankruptcy. Arcane Research was doing some analysis on what uh, bankruptcy from Genesis and from DCG would mean for markets. Uh, what is your take on what DCG's potential bankruptcy or theoretical bankruptcy would mean for the market? Would we see another severe hit to prices or confidence? So the first answer to your question is, I don't think he can just bankrupt uh, Genesis. Like it is completely commingled. He put out all sorts of statements. We were a trading partner. We have <laughs> emails and documents from them saying, you know, DCG is fully behind this. They've absorbed these losses. And of course, now Barry's saying, I don't know what he was talking about. Of course, we weren't taking those losses. You know, but he did, in, he did successfully encourage a huge number of large institutions in crypto to start trading with them again, on the basis that DCG had taken that 3AC loss and the Babel losses and the other losses, you know, onto the DCG balance sheet. It was, you know, put it on Twitter in press releases, you know, so I, I, I don't see any possible way he can just bankrupt Genesis uh, and not also bankrupt DCG. I do think there's a very high likelihood, and it won't be Barry's choice, that other creditors will force first Genesis into bankruptcy, which then put DCG into bankruptcy. Um, you know, and and I think so. I think there's a real, uh, there's a very pretty likely chance it goes that way going forward. So what does that mean for the space? And again, I mean, it's, it really depends on what happens with Grayscale. You know, so if DCG goes bankrupt, but Grayscale trusts are separate and fine and done the way that legally they they should be. Uh, I don't think the impact is very large. Um, I think there'll be some recovery for the Gemini urn holders, you know, whatever it be, you know, 60, 70 cents in the dollar. That kind of depends on what happens to 3AC and FTX, because there'll be some recoveries from those as well. Um, so that's that's bad, but it's, you know, I think that's pretty well already priced in. Those assets have been locked for months now. Um, so I don't think it's huge for the crypto space, but it would be one more negative storyline, one more reason for the SEC and CFTC and all the regulatory uh, agencies to come in and investigate more and, and put more hamstrings on the industry. Um, but I think that's already kind of done. Like, I think they're already doing as much as they, you know, want to do and have kind of free reign to go after people already. Okay, before we go, we reached out to Grayscale about that interview and the questions around its Bitcoin trust. In response, the company pointed to the CEO's end of year letter to investors, which said in part, quote, the assets underpinning Grayscale products, including GBTC, remain safe, secure, and unencumbered. 
It added that Grayscale adheres to U.S. financial rules, regulations, reporting requirements, and accounting principles like other asset managers. That's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow, so we'll see you then.